Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Scotty didn't look very happy when I ran into him at the bank. He was discouraged and pretty much down. It was obvious that something wasn't right. Scotty, I asked, is something wrong? You're not looking very well, I said. His reply shook me as he began, I'm, I'm not expecting to live much longer. He paused for a few minutes, then continued, I, I just turned 55, and my dad died by the time he was 55, and my grandfather died before that. I'm the only one of us still living, and I'm afraid my time is about up. You know, he was a hundred percent serious. He had actually convinced himself that he had only a short while to live. I lost touch with Scotty, but I have always wondered what happened to him. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, though, that his fears became self-fulfilling prophecies. With some folks, there is a tragic mindset that comes with aging that convinces them the best is really behind them, the worst is yet to come. Years ago, the writer of Proverbs said, As he thinks in his heart, so is he. And that applies also to your attitude towards aging. Ogden Nash once wrote, People expect old men to die. They look at them with eyes that wonder when. The average male dies within three to seven years after retirement, usually leaving behind a wife who will outlive her husband from four to 15 years. Your attitude has a lot to do with the quality of your life right now. And believe me, while your attitude cannot stop the aging process, it can stop old age dead in its tracks. Let me explain. Okay, you can't stop the aging process. That's part of the natural process of life as your body gradually begins to slow down. But your attitude can greatly slow down the aging process as you keep yourself healthy, exercise properly, and watch your diet. I've often said that age is a matter of the mind. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Think of Moses, the great lawgiver, who was 80 years old when God called him. He then led the children of Israel for 40 years. When it came time for him to cross the threshold of death, Scripture says, His eye was not dimmed and his step was not abated or slacked. I am reminded of another gray-haired great, David Ben-Gurion, who gave birth to the modern nation of Israel long after the age that most of his contemporaries were sitting in the warm sun, their feet propped up on a cushion. I think of Golda Meir, who served her country until she was 80, and Cam Townsend, the founder of the Wycliffe Bible Translators and the Summer Institute of Linguistics, who continued to serve as an international ambassador of goodwill until his death at age 85. The Canadian missionary, Jonathan Goforth, who, having served as a pioneer missionary in China for half a century, returned at the age of 70 to open up a new field where missionaries had never ventured. When concert pianist Arthur Rubinstein reached his 88th birthday, he told the press that he had reached the happiest part of life for a pianist, that of playing encores. The great virtuosos said that he felt as though he had been playing encores ever since he hit the 80 mark. That is when we pianists always feel the happiest giving encores, he said. We can play all sorts of things that we want to. People applaud. That is just my state of life, end quote. What a beautiful way of looking at life, playing encores, doing the things that you've always wanted to do. Encores indeed. May I say it again, tremendous difference between aging and growing old. Aging is inevitable. Growing old is not. That's a state of mind. If you would like to print out this series or listen to it again or download it in MP3, you can do that by going to the homepage on our web, guidelines.org, and then click on the date for today. 